Hi everybody. So I showed you Cranilla 1 to 6. They are coming out of the skull through the openings of the anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa. Now I'm going to show you cranial nerve 7 to 12. 7 to 12. They are coming out of the skull through the posterior cranial fossa, this area. Cranial nerve 7, facial nerve and eight vestibular cochlear. They are exiting is the skull through these openings here. Yeah, this opening is called internal acoustic meatus or internal auditory meatus. It's on the posterior surface of this uh, rocky bone. This rocky bone is called the uh, petrous part of temporal bone. This is the petrous part of temporal bone. On the posterior surface, you can see in the middle, we have internal auditory meatus, cranial nerve seven and eight passing through. And then cranial nerve seven exiting this skull through this framing. Here is the mastoid process. This one is the styloid process. Between the mastoid and the styloid, there is a hole here. It's called stylomastoid framing here. So cranial nerve seven, facial nerve, exiting the skull through the stylomastoid framing. And it supplies the muscles, facial expression muscles like this. So it's coming out of the skull through the stylomastoid framing and distributes on the face, facial expression muscles. Yeah, this is the facial expression muscles. And cranial nerve eight ends up the inner ear, which is embedded into the petrous part of temporal bone. It's not exiting the skull. A little bit down to the internal acoustic meatus, we have a J-shaped foramen here. This is the J-shaped foramen. It's jugular foramen, J-shaped jugular. It's connecting the posterior cranial fossa to this area. So internal jugular vein and cranial nerve 9, 10, 11, exiting this skull through the jugular foramen. This is the jugular foramen. 9, 10, 11. And this big hole in the middle of the occipital bone, this is the occipital bone, and in the middle of the occipital bone, this big hole is called the foramen magnum. So frame and magnum allows the brain stem to exit the skull and make the spinal cord. So you can see here, this is the occipital bone from the superior view. And here is the brain stem. You can see how brain stem exiting the skull through the frame and magnum and to make the spinal cord inside the vertebral canal. You can also see another artery passing through. This is the basilar artery. The red one is the basilar artery. So you see how two vertebral artery traveling um, through the cervical spine and they come together, make basilar artery and basilar artery passing through the frame and magnum to get into the, to the skull and supply mainly the brain stem. On either side of the foramen magnum, there is another foramen here. I'm going to show you. This is the foramen magnum. On either side, we have canal. It's called hypoglossal canal. So hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12, exiting this hole through this one. So I'm going to give you an overview. This is the skull inside the skull. This is the cranial fossa. We have lots of foramina, canals and fissures. They allow the cranial nerve one to 12 passing out through those foramina. So cranial nerve nine, one, olfactory is the most anterior one. Cranial nerve 12 is the most posterior one. They are numbered from anterior to posterior. 
one olfactory passing through the olfactory, this cribriform plate, two optic canal, three, four, five, six, superior orbital fissure, rotundum, five V2, maxillary, a valley, five V3, is the mandibular. Posterior cranial fossa, we have internal acoustic meatus, four, seven, and eight, jugular J shape, nine, 10, 11, and finally, we have foramen magnum. On either side of the foramen magnum, we have hypoglossal canal for hypoglossal nerve. Have a good day.